This is a triangle. How many sides does a triangle have, Sandy? Triangle has three sides. Now, Sandy, come forward, please. Right, I want you to choose the correct card and put it under a triangle. I'm going to do a symmetry lesson. It will integrate with language as well as with the visual art aspect of life skills. The aim of the lesson is for learners to recognize and identify the lines of symmetry in 2D geometrical shapes. How many sides does a square have? Yes, Malaika? Four. A square has four sides. Now come, Malaika, choose the correct card and put it under a square. Right, well done, my girl. Let's move on to the next shape. Circle. How many sides does a circle have? None. Grade threes, when it comes to a circle, it's a bit tricky because some people believe that a circle doesn't have any sides and some believe that a circle has infinite sides. We went through the different 2D geometrical shapes, which I cut out of cardboard and will later display in my classroom as a resource. I discussed the number of sides each shape has and attaching words for shapes, which led to maths integration with language. Triangle, square, circle, hexagon, diamond, octagon. But, grade threes, I'm going to put another set of shapes on the board and I want you to look at them carefully. What do you notice about these shapes? Yes, see what you say? They all divided into halves. We took the shapes we had just discussed and introduced the concept of symmetry with a halving line. This dotted line has a special name. Does anyone know what we call this dotted line? It's the line of symmetry. Wow, well done, Jolene. Yes, this line that you see drawn in the middle of each shape is called the line of symmetry. And our lesson for today is about symmetry. Does anyone know what symmetry means? Yes, Leila? Symmetry means equal, like one half is equal and the other half is equal. Symmetry means that both sides are the exact same when split in half. And we say that the two sides are mirror images of each other. Right, I'm now going to give each of you a mirror and half of a shape. I want you to hold your mirror along the dotted line and tell me what you see in your mirror. Okay. I thought since symmetry involves a mirror image, we could use mirrors to reinforce the concept and help the learners to get a good understanding of what symmetry is about. It's a heart. The other side of the heart that you see in your mirror, is it similar to the side that I already gave you? Yes. Very good. So now can we say that a heart is symmetrical or not? Yes. yes, it is symmetrical. Why? Because it has equal sides. Very good, because it has two equal sides. I want you to take your pencils and complete your shape by drawing its mirror image as you see it in your mirror. Right. Once you're happy with your half that you've drawn, you can take your black marker and go over it. It is important to walk around and check that everybody understands the concept. Perfect. I took a rectangle and folded it in different ways to find the lines of symmetry. Right. I want you to look at this shape now. Do all sides match? No. No, they don't. So, can we call this fold line a line of symmetry? No. No, we can't call this fold line a line of symmetry because both sides don't fit perfectly on top of each other. Right. I'm going to try and fold my rectangle now this way. Now, can we call this fold line a line of symmetry? Yes. Why do you say so? Both of them are squares and they, um, it has a line of symmetry. Because both sides fit perfectly on top of each other and all edges are actually, they, they're matching, right? It is important for the kids to see that a single object can have fold lines that are non-symmetrical and fold lines that are symmetrical and perhaps even have more than one line of symmetry. 
want you to look at this rectangle very carefully. Do you think that there could be another line of symmetry in this rectangle just by looking at, at it? How many of you think that there could be another line of symmetry? Let's try and see if we can find another line of symmetry here. Okay, firstly, we folded our rectangle this way, remember, and it didn't work. Then we folded it this way, and it worked. Right, now let's try and <coughs> fold it this way. There we go, perfect. Now can we call this fold line a line of symmetry? Yes. Yes, we can call this fold line a line of symmetry because both sides are exactly the same. Good. So how many lines of symmetry does a rectangle have all together? Two. A rectangle has two lines of symmetry. And if you look at the lines, one is drawn from top to bottom, and the other one is drawn from left to right. And there's a special word that we use for a line that is drawn from top to bottom. Vertical. Very good. It's a vertical line. This one is a vertical line. Right, and what do we call this line that is drawn from left to right? Horizontal. A rectangle has two lines of symmetry. It has a vertical line of symmetry and a horizontal line of symmetry. Right. It is important for the kids not only to watch, but to do it practically and find as many lines of symmetry as possible to solidify the concept. To reinforce this, I gave children a square and ask them to work in groups and fold a square in different ways in order to determine how many lines of symmetry a square has. Sibuyi says group, how many lines of symmetry did you find in a square? This is one line, this is another line, and this is another line. One, yes, that's a two, three, four. So how many lines of symmetry does a square have all together? Four. Right, Sibuyi say. Come show us how you folded your square in order to get those four lines of symmetry. Right, I'm going to give you a new one now, like this. Right, how did you fold it first? Just show us. Firstly, she folded it. Very good. Firstly, she folded it like this, and that's how she got her first line of symmetry. Let me draw it quickly. There we go. There we go, one. I got one of the learners to demonstrate how they got their lines of symmetry so that those who struggled were able to watch a practical example of how it was done. During this demonstration, learners were introduced to another line of symmetry, which is a diagonal line. Well done, and she folded it in this direction. Let's use another color for our third line. Some of the learners got confused and counted the lines of symmetry from the center. So here I drew the lines of symmetry in different colors so that they can carry the lines of symmetry through from corner to corner. How many lines of symmetry does a square have all together? Four. Four lines of symmetry in total, right. And remember, when we were working with our rectangle, we said this line that is drawn from top to bottom is called a? a vertical line. Very good, it's called a vertical line. And this one that is drawn from left to right is called a? Horizontal line. Very good, it's called a horizontal line. But look at our square now. There's another line that we have. See? Does anyone know what this line is called? This one that goes like this, or that is drawn like this? Does anyone know what that one is called? A diagonal line. Well done, grade threes. In the next exercise, I gave learners a selection of shapes and asked them to sort them into symmetrical and non-symmetrical shapes on the board. Some of these shapes were more complex, so the learners were encouraged to think clearly about what they had just learned. 
Thank you so much, guys, for helping me. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much. I'm going to give each one of you a page like this. And I want you to fold it into two halves and then draw half of a butterfly. The exercise of decorating the butterfly symmetrically using symmetrical shapes encouraged the learners to put into practice what they had learned and think about symmetry. There we go. You must draw half of a butterfly and then you must take your pair of scissors and cut this out for me. What do you think it's going to happen when we open this? It's going to be a butterfly. There we go. We have our butterfly now. Right. And I want you <coughs> to decorate this butterfly symmetrically. I'm going to give each of you colored paper like this. You're also going to fold this into two halves and you're going to draw half of a shape of your choice. Let's say maybe you decide to draw a, a heart. Okay, you're just gonna draw half of a heart like this. Got your symmetrical picture now of a heart. And then you can cut it into two equal halves and then you may decorate your butterfly. Remember, when you decorate, whatever you put this side, you must also put on the other side so that your, um, your picture, also that your decoration looks symmetrically. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it's not gonna be symmetrical. Okay, so whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. You need another one. To reinforce the concept, we worked on the mat using shapes to build up symmetrical pictures. This is a great exercise as the learners have freedom in what they are creating, but at the same time have to conform to the rules of symmetry. Beautiful, guys, what did you make here? A butterfly. Wow, that's a beautiful butterfly. So where's the line of symmetry in this butterfly? Can you show me just put it by putting some shapes there? Symmetry, it is a fundamental part of geometry, nature, and shapes. Children usually learn about geometric shapes at a very early age. They learn first about a shape as a whole. With the help of symmetry, they learn how to focus on the characteristics and parts of an object.